Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 1st of June. India announces relief measures for MSMEs, farmers and street vendors. Health experts express concern as Pakistan's COVID-19 tally crosses 72,000. And Bangladesh resumes train services as lockdown eases. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday chaired a cabinet meeting in which some important decisions related to MSME and agriculture sectors were taken. This was the cabinet's first meeting since the government entered its second year of office. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday chaired a meeting of the Union Cabinet as the country entered the first day of the centre's three-phase unlocking plan throughout the country. This is the first Cabinet meeting as the government entered into its second year in office. In order to support stressed micro, small and medium enterprises or MSMEs, the centre rolled out a Rs 20,000 crore distressed asset fund to extend support to promoters of distress units. The Cabinet also announced Rs 50,000 crore equity investment assistance for MSMEs to help them tide over the liquidity crisis, said India's Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Chavadekar while briefing the media. The Cabinet also approved hike in minimum support price for 14 crops and credit scheme for street vendors. MSMEs are in the market. They are in the market for the equity for the rupees of 20,000 crore rupees. का प्रस्ताव आज कैबिनेट द्वारा औपचारिक रूप से अनुमोदित किया गया इससे दो लाख ऐसे जो संकट में है ऐसे एमएसएमई को फायदा होगा प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी हैड रिसेंटली अनाउंस्ड रुपीस 20 लाख करोड़ इकोनॉमिक स्टिमुलस पैकेज फॉर द कंट्री फाइटिंग द कोरोना वायरस स्टेटिंग दैट इट विल गिव अ न्यू इंपेटस एंड न्यू डायरेक्शन टू द सेल्फ रिलायंट इंडिया कैंपेन Meanwhile, India's COVID-19 tally on Monday witnessed its highest ever spike of 8,392 cases in the last 24 hours. The total number of coronavirus cases in country now stands at 190,535, including 93,322 active cases and 5,394 deaths. India on Sunday extended its coronavirus closure until June 38 in high-risk zones, but permitted restaurants, malls and religious buildings to reopen elsewhere from June 8, despite a record high number of cases detected nationwide. Pakistan on Monday summoned a senior Indian diplomat to register strong protest over New Delhi's decision to expel two officials of the Pakistan High Commission on charges of espionage. The two Pakistani visa officials were caught red-handed by police in New Delhi while they were gathering sensitive documents and information on India's defence establishments. A day after India decided to expel two officials of Pakistan's High Commission in New Delhi on charges of espionage, Islamabad on Monday summoned a senior Indian diplomat to register its protest against the move. Pakistan's foreign office on Monday said Pakistan strongly rejects the baseless Indian allegations and deplores the Indian action which is in clear violation of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, as well as the norms of diplomatic conduct, especially in an already vitiated atmosphere. On Sunday, the two visa officials at the Pakistan High Commission in New Delhi were caught red-handed by Delhi police personnel while they were gathering sensitive documents and information on India's defence establishments from an Indian national. देखिए पाकिस्तान जो है हमेशा इंडिया से पैरिटी चाहता है इंडिया से पैरिटी लेता रहेगा उसकी चाहती है उसकी पॉलिसी ये है उसकी एक टेररिज्म की पॉलिसी है जो पाकिस्तानी आर्मी ड्राइव करती है और जो स्पेनेज होता है ये तो पाकिस्तान की पाकिस्तान एम्बेसी से करता ही करता है और पाकिस्तान इस समय पर जब इंडिया के पूरे 
انرجی اور فوکس جو ہے لائن آف ایکچل کنٹرول پر ہے تو ضروری بات ہے پاکستان اس کا فائدہ اٹھائے گا دی آفیشیلس ورکنگ ایٹ دی ویزا ڈپارٹمنٹ آف دی پاکستان ہائی کمیشن کنفیسٹ دیٹ دے ورک فار پاکستانی اسپائی ایجنسی آئی ایس آئی موونگ آن پاکستان کرونا وائرس کیسز ٹیلی آن منڈے جم ٹو سیونٹی ٹو تھاؤزینڈ فور ہنڈریڈ سکسٹی Doctors have expressed concerns that the country's already fragile health system will collapse if the number of cases continue to grow. Pakistan's nationwide tally of fatalities jumped to 1,543 on Monday as 60 more deaths from coronavirus were confirmed in one day and confirmed cases surged to 72,460 with emergence of 2,964 new infections. Sindh remains the worst hit province by the pandemic followed by Punjab, Khaiwar Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan. Doctors have expressed concerns that the country's already fragile health system will collapse if the number of cases continue to grow. Secretary General of Pakistan Medical Association Dr. Kaisar Sajjad said that several patients have been facing problems in Karachi as hospitals were denying admission to infected patients. Lihaza, we are saying this very early that if the number of patients will increase, then the load will increase in the hospital, the load will increase in the doctor, and there will be a very bad situation. In the case of Karachi, there is at least a situation that people don't have to go to the hospital in hospital. Despite rising rate of cases, Pakistan began a phased lifting of its countrywide lockdown from May 9th, a move pushed primarily by fears of an economic meltdown. In news from Afghanistan, a journalist and a studio technician of an Afghan television station were killed when a private bus carrying them was bombed in Kabul on Saturday. At least six other journalists were wounded in the blast. The attack has sparked several reactions seeking intervention of law enforcement authorities in investigating this act of terrorism. Two employees of an Afghan television station, Zamir Amiri and Saifullah Zabi, were killed when a private bus carrying them was bombed in Kabul on Saturday. At least six other journalists were wounded in the roadside rush hour blast. A preliminary probe showed a bomb attached by magnets to the bus used by Kabul-based Khurshid TV employees was blown up during the evening rush hour. No militant group claimed responsibility for the attack. The attack has sparked several reactions including family and friends who have criticized the government for inaction to the security of the citizens and for not preventing terrorist attacks. Condemning the attack, Abdullah Abdullah, head of the High Council for National Reconciliation, called on law enforcement authorities to fully investigate this act of terrorism. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani spokesman Siddiq Siddiqui condemned the attack, calling it a terrorist attack. Meanwhile, Rafi Rafiq Siddiqui, CEO of Khurshid TV, referring to similar incidents against big media outlets in the past, hoped that Saturday's incident is not forgotten. Afghan Journalist Safety Committee called on security forces to identify the perpetrators. Train services have resumed in Bangladesh as the government has eased the coronavirus lockdown and people stranded in different districts can now return home. The government's decision to gradually lift the months-long lockdown has drawn criticism within the country, but officials insist that it is in people's interest. Life in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka is gradually returning to normal as train services resumed on Sunday amid East coronavirus lockdown. Authorities in Bangladesh have decided to gradually lift the lockdown despite increasing infection as they try to diminish the economic impact of the coronavirus restrictions. Bangladesh has been under lockdown since March 26 to curb the spread of the novel coronavirus. আমি প্রায় আজকে 70 দিন পর বাংলা রাজশাহী যাইতেছি আমার হোম ডিস্ট্রিক্ট আমা এবং কিপিং সেফ ডিসটেন্স আমি এখানে বসছি আমার ওয়াইফ ওখানে বসছে হসপিটালস হ্যাভ বিন স্ট্রাগলিং টু ডিল উইথ দ্য স্পাইক ইন ইনফেকশনস ইন রিসেন্ট উইকস ইন বাংলাদেশ হুইচ হ্যাজ রিপোর্টেড ওভার 47000 কেসেস এন্ড এট লিস্ট 610 অ্যাসোসিয়েটেড ডেথস সো ফার 
Some health experts are concerned that the real number of cases could be higher in the country as many people have only limited access to health care. The Nepal government on Sunday tabled a constitution amendment bill in the parliament aimed at altering the country's map amid a border row with India. Nepal had released the revised political and administrative map of the country last month, laying claim over disputed territories of Lipu Lake, Kalapani and Limpia Dhura. India has said the tri-junction is part of its territory, but it remains open for dialogue. The Nepal government on Sunday tabled a constitution amendment bill in the parliament aimed at altering the country's map amid a border row with India. Law Minister Shivamaya Tumba Hangfe on behalf of the government of Nepal tabled the bill a day after the main opposition Nepali Congress also backed the legislation. Nepal recently released the revised political and administrative map of the country, laying claim over Indian territories of Lipu Lake, Kalapani and Limpia Dhura. Formal discussions over the tabled bill is expected to start within this week. After its endorsement by both the houses of the parliament, the president will order issuance of the bill. While reacting over the release of the map on May 20th, India had said such artificial enlargement of territorial claims will not be acceptable and asked the neighbouring country to refrain from such unjustified cartographic assertions. In a bid to mitigate the economic impact of the coronavirus, former Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe has said the country must enter into a free trade agreement with India. The island nation expects its economy to decline to 1.5% by 2020 due to the pandemic. Former Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe has said Sri Lanka must enter into a free trade agreement with India in a bid to mitigate the economic impact of the coronavirus. Speaking during an online discussion on Sunday, Vikramasinghe said that Sri Lanka must enter into new markets as the country expects its economy to decline to 1.5% by 2020, according to the central bank. A free trade deal would see a reduction in the barriers to trade between the two countries. Sri Lanka's exports have declined by 82% in April 2020 amidst the pandemic when compared to the same month last year, with apparel exports dropping drastically as much as 81.78%. The island nation has not seen any tourist arrival since March 18, after it shut down airports and ports as part of efforts to combat the coronavirus. Authorities are, however, mulling the reopening of airports by August. Sri Lanka has 1,633 infections and 11 deaths due to the virus as of Monday. Amid coronavirus pandemic, scores of devotees in India flouted social distancing norms and gathered at banks of River Ganga on Monday on the occasion of Ganga Dashera festival. Taking a dip in the river on this day is considered a means of devotees to get rid of their sins and also heal any physical ailments. Amid the coronavirus outbreak in India, hundreds of devotees flouted social distancing norms on Monday as they gathered at the banks of Sangam, a religiously imported confluence of Holy Ganga, Yamuna and mystical Saswati rivers on the occasion of Ganga Dashera festival. Hindus believe that religiously revered river Ganga came from heaven to earth on this day and taking a dip in the river on the occasion absolves a person of his or her sins. Local police later took cognizance of the matter and stopped vehicles from going towards the river body. River Ganga is also referred as Ganga Mata or Mother Ganga and is worshipped by Hindus who make up about 80% of the India's total population. Several lockdown restrictions have been eased across India with conditions of physical distancing. Gatherings at religious places are still not allowed. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन